We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your mercy and your grace, for keeping us in your perfect will, and for teaching us, Lord God, to follow your path and your truth. Lord God, even as we dedicate ourselves unto you this day, we pray that your spirit, your spirit of truth, Father God, shall seize us so we may be witness and testify to the truth. Lord God, we submit ourselves unto you, and then we bring our mind, soul, and body to be subjected unto you. Asking you, Lord God, for your shift and your direction. Speak unto us, for we listening. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then I thank the Lord for all of us in this place and for those of you watching online. We bless the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, we want today to speak concerning a uh, subject that the Lord has brought into my spirit, which is, am I saved? Hallelujah. Am I saved? Uh, many, you know, doctrine are around talking about salvation. But there is only one doctrine that is right, which is the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That suffers no contradiction. We may have a different opinion on the Word of God, but the Word of God explains itself and needs no one to explain it. Because the Word of God is revelation by himself. The Word of God is the Lord Jesus Christ, as the Bible says in the book of John chapter 1, that he is the Word. Hallelujah. So the Word of God is explained by the Word of God, and the Word of God is revealed by the Word of God. And the Spirit of God, which is also the Word of God, the Spirit of God, which is the Father, the Spirit of God, which is the Godhead, can only explain himself by himself. So we cannot use anything else. We cannot use philosophy. We cannot use a New Age. We cannot use a Yoga. We cannot use a Buddha. We cannot use Muslim. We cannot use none of it to explain and then to dwell and to understand the Word of God. Hallelujah. So the Word of God today is explained by the Word of God in some... Uh, denominations or in some uh, cultures, in some uh, churches or in some uh, places or religion, they believe that the word of God is of non-effect. They even believe that the word of God or Jesus Christ, for instance, they believe that Jesus Christ did not die on the cross. Hallelujah. They believe that he was just a prophet who came around and then he was a good man. And some of them believe that he was a historical, uh, historical man. Some believe that uh, he was just uh, one of uh, uh, somebody. Some, some actually don't even believe that he actually came at all. Hallelujah. But the word of God, why is the word of God true? Uh, why are we relying on the word of God? Why salvation can, uh, uh, why salvation does not come to men except through the Lord? Why do we say, because some people would say um, they are born saved because uh, they were born and then Christ died already 2,000 years ago. So by the time they were born, they were already saved. So all kind of uh, stupidity of, uh, should I say, foolishness of uh, doctrine that we have uh, around. But the word of God remains true. And why do we rely on the word of God? Because you see, in the time when the Lord was speaking of things that nobody knew, when they did not have Google around, when they did not have internet around, when they did not have telephone around, that nobody knew what was going on, the prophet of God spoke of things that were to come and they did come to pass. Hallelujah. That's how you know. The Bible said that you can only realize or recognize a prophet by how he speaks and what comes to pass from what he has spoken. Many people have come and they have prophesied things to come. Some of them came some of them did not some of them did not come at all but the word of god and the prophet of god because it is the spirit of god who created the earth he knows all and everything and prophesied hallelujah and from that prophecy came about the lord jesus because it was already prophesied that there will become there will be one that will come and when he comes he will save his people Hallelujah. When we talk about salvation, it's not a word that is found only in the New Testament. No. When you go all the way in the book of, uh, I mean, in the Old Testament, you see salvation. In the book of Exodus, the Bible says, chapter 14, it tells, it says, stay still, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Salvation is not a word that was used the first time in the, in the New Testament. You need a saved. It is all the way back. The Lord always spoke of saving, of saving his people. Hallelujah. Of saving his own. He has already brought salvation to people. 
people. Even actually the name Joshua means God saves. Hallelujah. So when God has chosen Joshua to lead the children of Israel out of her, uh, uh, to cross over the Jordan, he was a, also a prefigure, a pre-shadow of God saving his people out of her, a, a, a chaos. Hallelujah. So in the New Testament, when you go in and you see the Lord Jesus Christ coming on the form, you will see that in certain scriptures, uh, the Bible says that after he resurrected, uh, he showed himself uh, upon diverse form. I love that word. The Bible said that he showed himself on diverse form. Hallelujah. That on some people he showed himself on his form and on other people he showed them in a different form. Hallelujah. That's the reason why some people, they see Jesus, they cannot recognize him because he takes a form. Hallelujah. But in our days, last days, he took the form of the Son. Amen. He took the form of the Son and came according to John chapter 3 verse 16 to come and to redeem and to give his life to the world so that the whosoever believe in him shall not die, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. In the book of John 6, the Bible says that, that without him, there is no salvation. Hallelujah. Outside of him, there is no salvation. He speaks in the book of John 10, even from chapter 8 all the way 10. He speaks on how he is the way, the truth, and the life. That no one goes to the Father except through him. Hallelujah. He goes further and he says, I am the door. Amen. I am the door through which men shall go and be saved. So can we say we are saved outside of Jesus Christ? Some people will say, but why will the Lord have people, you know, people were created and maybe they were born in the Buddhist uh, culture. And then we say, well, you know, them people who born in the Buddhist culture, you know, it's not their fault. <laughs> Hallelujah. It doesn't work like that with God. Because the Bible says that uh, all the creation of God, everything that God has made, uh, he has planted his spirit into man. So every man from the time he was created, he knows God. That's why the book of Romans says that uh, they are therefore without excuse. Hallelujah. This is because man knows God from the spirit that God has breathed into man. That's why man is looking to worship somebody. Hallelujah. When Paul is right in the book of Corinthians, he speaks on saying that uh, there are certain cities where he went in the arena in certain places and he saw certain idols and certain gods. And one of them was writing saying to the unknown God. And he came unto them, he says, the unknown God that you're speaking to, I came and I'm preaching unto you, it is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So I am saved, or am I saved, uh, depends not on how the pastor tells you you're saved. You know, you are not saved either because you have made a prayer. Hallelujah. You are not saved because you have a, a, a copy, a, a, a prayer, or you, no, 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 no. You are not saved that way. If it was that uh, a, a way to be saved, then, uh, you know, uh, everybody would be in heaven. Amen. The Bible said that the, lay, the way that the, 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 the pathway that leads to perdition is wide. And many takes it. But the one that leads to everlasting life is narrow. And the Bible says, few finds it. So if it was just about, uh, oh, I, oh, I am saved, I am on my way to heaven, you, no problem, you will be in heaven by then. Amen. It doesn't work this way. The book of Romans says that uh, you are to believe by confessing. You confess with your mouth and you believe with your heart. Hallelujah. And believing means to deposit all of yourself into trust of someone. And when you are saved, according to the Bible, according to the scripture, there is transformation of your whole being. Because you are therefore dead to sin and alive with Christ. So somebody who practices sin and loves sin, you're not saved at all. You can't be saved. Because salvation, it saves you from something. It removes you from something. The Bible said that in the time past, we were under the power of sin. So whatever we wanted to do right, we could not do because the power of sin was overriding our will. But when we came unto Jesus Christ, that power was broken. That's why the Bible said that he came to destroy the works of the enemy, of the devil. 
He didn't come to rearrange them. He didn't come to tie them. No, he came to destroy the works of the devil. So salvation, when you enter the will of God, when you enter the heart of God, when you enter the mind of God, as you sit in, or should I say dwell in, the Bible says he also dwells in you. And five uh, and Second Corinthians 5, 17 says, you are therefore a new creation. The Bible does not encourage us to be an in-between creation. Hallelujah. You see, when you go further and then you see when the Lord Jesus speaks in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 2, he goes further and 2 or 3, he says further, he says, to the people of the church or the Christian or the believer who has been saved in the sense of uh, knew Jesus Christ and then got baptized and all that became Christian, it tells unto him, if you are not hot, not cold, you are good for nothing. You will be spewed out. So am I saved? How do you know you are saved? First and first thing, your mind is set onto where your salvation comes from. How do you know you're saved? By having your mind set, set upon the things in heaven. You know, when you have been redeemed from the trash of the world, from the pollution of the world. The second book of Peter says that after you have been redeemed from the pollution of the world, if you go back unto it, there is nothing to do for you. So salvation does not come by your own will because it is not self-centered. It's not your effort that makes you saved. The Bible says in the book of Romans that while we're still sinners, he died on the cross for us. So no one sent a letter a request for salvation. However, once salvation has been given, the Bible tells us that the, Bible, uh, the, 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 the salvation has been given through grace by faith. Amen? It is not the works of the flesh, lest anyone boast himself, but it was given through grace by faith. Grace, why? Because you were still sinners and salvation was hanging for you to get it. And through faith, because you do the work of faith, should I say, you activate yourself into entering and taking that salvation and you become saved through the name, through the cross of Jesus Christ. Without the death of Jesus Christ, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, there is no salvation. There is absolutely no salvation. You see, the Muslim goes and they say that uh, they know that Jesus Christ uh, came on the earth. They even know that he's coming back to judge the world. But they say he did not die. So for them, there is no salvation. They just know of him. They know about him. But they don't have the knowledge of him. You see, when the Bible says know him, it is the same word that is used as uh, to, to say that Abraham knew Sarah. It is entering in, mingling in, becoming one with that truth. And so the Bible calls us to know God, even as he knows us. To know the truth, even as the truth sets us free. In the book of John chapter 8, from verse 30 to 32, the Lord speaks unto those who believe on him. He says, there is a condition for you to be delivered by the truth. He says, if you continue in my word. If you continue in my word, if you sit yourself in my word, if you set your mind in my word, if you drink my word, if you do my word, if you plead my word, then you become my disciple. It's only when you become the disciple that now you know the truth. The truth that you can testify to and the Bible said the truth shall set you free. So salvation is not a topic is a necessity for the soul. Salvation is not an idea. It is a prerogative given unto men by which they may live. Salvation is not a good philosophical theory. It is the imperative to any created human being to acquire and to have. So salvation does no longer becomes a self-centered effort, but it becomes the Christ-centered sacrifice. You have to believe into one, only one. You cannot believe into Jesus and you believe in yoga. 
You cannot believe into Jesus Christ and you believe into Buddhism. You cannot believe into Jesus Christ and you believe in science. You see, they always say, I believe in science because it is religion. <laughs> yes, science is also a religion. Some people sworn that they, they, they even say, oh, I trust science. I put my trust in science. I believe in science. Yeah, some say, oh, the doctor saved me. You know, there are all kind of stuff they said. But you see, you can only believe in one. Put your trust in one. Christ of Jesus. I was listening to some people. And they were talking about you know, what we have in the world right now. And they said, they firmly believe that we shall be saved through science. They really believe that. You see, science has become something used by men to disprove God. Although they can't. But for you to believe that science is true and God is not true, then you have made out of science a religion. Are, are you following? You have made a, out of science a religion. The, the same way, for example, you can make out of uh, your finances a religion. You believe that money can do everything, even buy your way to heaven. Uh, you see the, the, the life of uh, um, um, Simon. He was called Simon the Sorcerer in the book of Acts chapter 8. He believed that he could buy the Holy Ghost with money. Some Christians are like that. They believe that if only they give the bigger tithe, their name will be written in the book of life. <laughs> Hallelujah. They believe that if only they accumulated the good deed that they do, their name will be written in the book of life. You are not saved by the good deeds that you do. You are not saved by the amount of money you give to the poor. You are not saved by the amount of uh, prayer that you do. You are not saved by the amount of church that you go. You are not saved by the amount of uh, teaching that you listen. Salvation is uh, found only in one. You got to put all your trust in Christ. Let me give an example. Some people go to church and when there is something wrong, when the pastor, the preacher, the apostle, whosoever that is, uh, does something wrong, what do they do? They fall away and they say, well, church hurt me because your trust was not in God. Your trust was not in Jesus Christ. Your trust was in the pastor. So therefore, the Lord do not say this is the church of the pastor. He said, this is my church. So you only go in the assembly for the fellowship, but your trust does not repose on the teaching of the pastor. Your, your trust repose on the word of God. That's the reason why when the word of God is being preached out, it belongs to you to receive it according to the word of God so that by the word of God uh, you be sustained. So they go further and they believe more in the pastor than they believe in Jesus Christ. The reason why is because when uh, the pastor does something, they fall away because they did not put their trust in the Lord. They were saved because of their pastor. Good. Good. But they did not remain safe because of the pastor too. <laughs> no one is saved because of a human being. Everybody is saved or everybody gets saved or everybody becomes saved because of the sacrifice of Christ. Hallelujah. Because of the sacrifice of Christ. So I want us to go in the book of uh, Acts. Chapter 2. We read from verse 37. Acts chapter 2, verse 37. The Bible says, Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what sh shall we do? That was when and the apostles and, and, and Peter, the apostle, they had addressed the crowd, uh, I mean the crowd, after the, 
the wind, the noise, the sound came from heaven and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They've been addressing the crowd on the things that have taken place in Jerusalem on the sacrifice of Christ and the death on the cross and all that. So they've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as they've been preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, it happened that this man, the Bible said that they were pricked in their heart. Why? Because this man themselves came unto Jerusalem for one reason. They came from all the earth to come to worship in Jerusalem. The Bible said that it was at the time of Pentecost. And at the time of Pentecost, people will come from all over the world to go towards the temple in order to worship. That's the reason why you can see many people were there. Hallelujah. So they did not come simply because they were going to tourism. No, they went because it was the day of worship of atonement, if you want. So they went for the reason of worship. But they did not know that that day that we have another thing that will come unto them. They were not saved because they were going to the temple. They were not saved because they were going to Israel. They were not saved because they were doing all the sacrifices of the goat and the sheep and the, all of that. No, they had to be saved by one name. So Peter starts speaking of the name of the Lord upon the, and under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, under the power of the Holy Ghost. As he starts speaking of all the things and how one shall be saved, the Bible said that there were pricked in their heart, meaning that something in their heart like it tied them down and they felt and they knew that uh, they were not saved. And because they knew they were not saved, no matter how the amount of things they did in the temple, no matter how the amount of things they said in the Lord, no matter how they believed in God, they knew there was one way to go to the heavenly, to the Father, it was Jesus Christ. So they said, what shall we do? Hallelujah. One thing that you realize here is that the, when the salvation comes unto you, it's not a dispute, it's not a uh, fight. It is a, hum uh, a humility of the heart. You humble yourself before the great God, uh, the Savior, and then you say, Lord, what shall I do to be saved? So the Bible says, he goes further and tells unto them, verse 37, uh, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, first and foremost, repent. Hallelujah. Nowadays, when somebody says, oh, how can I do salvation? Repeat a prayer. <laughs> Although both are re-re, the one is repeat, the other one is repent. Hallelujah. Although the repeat starts with R-E and finish with T, repent starts with at R-E and finish with T, both are not the same in between. There is a content in between you need to do. So you got to have a paint inside. So repent. No, repeat. Hallelujah. He could have told them, brother, you are so many over here, 3,000 people. Let's say the prayer because he already asked to God, to Jesus Christ, teach us how to pray. So they already have the prayer. So he could have said, oh, sir, our father who art in heaven. I love be thy name. Oh, let my sin be washed, and I am saved. I am on my way to heaven. Amen. No, that's not true. All those saying a prayer can be, if you want, an instigator for yourself to find a way, but it is not the certainty, the guarantee of your salvation. The Bible says it is not only by confessing. It did not say that those who say, Lord, Lord, we come in heaven. No. Those who speak with the word and believe in their heart. So the coupling of believing in your heart brings repentance. For without repentance, there is no possibility to even get in the ways of the Lord. That's why before the Lord Jesus Christ would come, he sent who? John the Baptist to prepare the ways of the Lord. How did he prepare the way of the Lord? By repentance. He prepared the ways of the Lord by repentance, not by excuse, not by philosophy, not by mathematics, not by, no, by repentance. And people who were getting baptized, they were getting baptized unto repentance. So they turn away from the evil deed and they go towards the Lord. So when the law was now to be presented, he said, Behold the Lamb of God who came to take away the sin of the world. How do you say, before you see the behold, you got to go through the repentance. 
There is no behold without repentance. You got to first repent. Hallelujah. Then Peter tell unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, why are there steps? The Holy Ghost is the last one that comes upon a saved person because it is the seal of salvation unto redemption. So as you are saved, you got to now work out that salvation through the Holy Ghost, coupling with the fruit of the Spirit towards redemption. Because the day of redemption has not yet arrived. The day of redemption is when you will stand before the great judge and he will ask you, what have you done with your life? That's when redemption is. You see, he redeemed you from sin. Now he has to redeem you from eternal death. Eternal death, that day of great judgment, the Bible says he shall judge all, the living and the dead. And judgment shall start by the house of God. So if you were already all done and everything, you would have just gone over there. You know, you have a green card, you arrive, my card, and then you go in. No, you will go through judgment. Why? Because the Lord will have to ask you, what have you done? Now, you will have to prove yourself out by confessing, by proclaiming your belief in the name of Jesus Christ only. His finished work at the cross and the evidences of your repentance. The, um, John says that uh, you got to have evidences, fruit of repentance. Fruit, evidences worthy of repentance. You lie yesterday, you went to church, you repented good, and the next day you're still lying. That's not repentance. Hallelujah. You just, if you want to uh, like, uh, stock the pile of your, your repentance, you haven't repented yet. Because repentance, according to the Bible, is not saying sorry to God about what we have uh, got, gotten caught in. But it is to tell to the Lord, I remove myself from those things. I believe in you for the strength to turn away from my sins and to walk towards you. There is one that practices sin. That one, the Bible says, he shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You can't. So much so that you can't. The book of Matthew chapter 7 from verse 20 and 21 and 22, it says, these people came unto him and they were so, you know, they, they, they were really ready. They, they, they were convinced that they were going to have uh, the, 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 the book of life and, and, and the crown. And, 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 you know, and they came and they said, Lord, we have prophesied in your name. We have done so in your name. They did not even say in their own name. They say in his name. You got to realize that uh, the Bible says that uh, these are the signs that will follow those who believe in me. So the sign they did was because they believe in him. Actually, there were even more believers than many Christians because many Christians don't even do miracles. But when they arrived, he didn't tell them, enter into my rest because you did miracle. Enter into my rest because you preach. Enter into my no, 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 no. Paul said that after I have preached the gospel unto others, I bring myself unto subjection, I bring my body unto subjection, lest I be myself disqualified. That's why when the disciple came unto Jesus, jumping, saying, Oh Lord, look, even the demons are all under our authority. We heal the sick, we preach the gospel. He told them, Yes, I know, but make sure that that, be, that does not become the, 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 the root of your pride that will cause you to fall. So make sure that all those things that, do, that, that, that does not blind you from the fact that you ought to rejoice that your name is written in heaven. You see, there is no angel that has ever rejoiced because somebody made miracle no nobody no no never heaven does not rejoice because you did miracle heaven only rejoice when you turn away from your sins 
Every man does not rejoice because you have made a prayer or you repeat a prayer. No, when you turn away from your sins. You see, when uh, the uh, prodigal son was in the, 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 the far away city, over there he made a prayer. Because he said, oh, if only I could go to my father, I know I will receive something, I will do. He made a prayer over there. But he did not enter the rest of his father until he moved away from there and enter in. So there is a movement you got to do first. You see, when God makes the image of salvation through Moses, what he does? He tells to the children of Israel, get out of where? Out of Egypt. So get out of the oppression of sin and now come and I'm about to show you salvation. He said, stay still and see the salvation of the Lord. What did he do? He divided the Red Sea. But when the sea was divided, what did they do? They have now to use their foot and their feet and to walk through. Salvation for them was not only the division of the sea, not the parting of the sea only. It was also the walking through the sea to get on the other reef. Amen. So you can see the sea divided and you see sitting, salvation is not for you. So there is an action an activity that you do once you have accepted and received salvation. And that's why the Bible says that uh, your heart turns away from sin and then your mind is as set in the heavenly. So that activity of you turning away from sin and going towards the Lord, that's what you call and you can say you are saved. It's not only the prayer that you do. It's not also the church that you attend. It's not the denomination that you are in. Some even people goes all the way further and they say that uh, why are you on earth you can uh, uh, negotiate your salvation until you die. And when you die, there is a, a, a place that they call purgatory. You will be stuck over there like in a tent, like in a hangar. And you will be over there with the cow and uh, with the sheep. So they, they, they will send you some prayer. You will die over there. <laughs> Amen. There is no purgatory. It is given unto men to die once. And afterward comes the judgment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is good. So salvation is given unto men for redemption. Towards redemption. So the Lord brings in and tells unto the people, repent. Be baptized, every one of you. There were many, more than three thousands. It would have been, or it would have made more sense to tell them, repeat this prayer, every one of you. It would have been easier. No, there was a need to do the work of God correctly, according to the plans and the purposes of God. Hallelujah. So it tells them, I will see live. Thank you, Lord. It tells them, Lord, He is near to ye. The heavens is near ye. The kingdom of God is at end. But take your hand and reach out. And as you reach out, say, Lord, I repent. I turn away from my sins and lead me. And as you say so, you believe inside. Hallelujah. So the confession and the believing in the finished work of Christ, in the cross of Jesus Christ, the blood of the Lamb, that's what brings salvation. Now, when you are saved by Jesus Christ, you know you are saved. Because the Holy Ghost, the Bible says the Holy Spirit testify in your spirit that you are therefore the child of God. Hallelujah. Salvation is not an expectation that maybe somehow, someday, Jesus will be uh, taking you in because he doesn't know who to take in. No. Salvation is a certainty of something that has happened in your life. Are you saved? Mm, I hope so. Hope, Salma. Hope. Wait. Amen. Are you saved? My mama was a pastor. Mm. Wait. Are you saved? 
Oh, I've been preaching for 35 years. Mm, wait. Are you saved? I read my Bible. Mm -hmm. Wait. Amen. The are you saved comes with two answers. Yes. No. Everything in between comes from the devil. Let your yes be yes in your salvation. Let your no be no in your salvation. Everything in between comes from the devil. Now, there is a yes that is not from God. Let's say, for example, you love sin and practice sin. Are you saying you say yes? You a liar. <laughs> Amen. The yes is not according to your feelings. The yes is according to the truth of God. When uh, the question is asked, are you saved? Is not according to your understanding. Is according to the word of God. Are you saved according to the principle of the word of God? Some people who believe that they were born into salvation so they don't have to do anything. They're just saved by default. They are not saved. Hallelujah. So salvation is not a attitude of mine or no is to embrace what the word of god says so you look into the mirror of the word of god you look into the prescription of the word of god and you see have you taken the peel of the word of god hallelujah have you injected in yourself the word of god uh, 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 have you taken in the word of god have you eaten the word of god is the word of god the definition of your salvation or your mindset philosophy or new age Because the word of God said that when you are saved, you are no longer practicing the things of the old man. Hallelujah. You may fall. And it's better for you not to fall. But the Bible said that even if you fall, you have still a, an advocate. It didn't say if you keep on sinning. If you keep on sinning, you have an accusator. And, and, and I'm sorry, I'm an accuser. Hallelujah. If you fall, you have an advocate. If you keep on sinning, you have an accuser. So you cannot keep on sinning and have an advocate. He doesn't even know you. When you come and you say, oh Lord, can I get in? Hmm. Depart from me, I never knew you. So salvation does not come by the effort that you do, but by the acceptance of everything that the Lord has done. Now, some people would say, well, I will save. I'm already saved. I always save. And, well, okay. When you save, you're not always saved independently of your sins. No. You save and you can lose your salvation. That's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 3 verse 5, the Bible says that uh, if you endure until the end and you don't turn away, I will not blot out. And the word blot out means to erase, to remove. He said, I will not blot out your name from the book of life. Hallelujah. Because there is a possibility for your name to be brought out from the book of life because you have not returned, uh, you have not um, continued into the word of God. You have not continued into the ways of the Lord. Simon the sorcerer, he was baptized, believed in Jesus, and saved. But when his heart did not let the word of God transform him, Peter told unto him, I perceive that your heart is bound by the gale of Satan. Judah, he was called to be saved. He was next to Jesus, ate with Jesus, but his heart, there was thief inside. Amen. So salvation brings transformation. Salvation is not information. It's transformation. Salvation is the realization of taking your heavenly mindset back. That's what the Bible says, that you are dead to sin. So if you are dead to sin and to the activities of the flesh, you can no longer live out of it because you're dead from it. So as you walk with the Spirit of God, you have to, through the Spirit of God, Always keep that confession in you, working with it. And if you fall, you know you have an advocate. But you don't fall because you have an advocate. 
Amen. Because when the word of God in you saturates you, you have a hate trade for sin. You hate sin. You hate sin so much that when you see sin over there, you don't even walk by. You just run away. Hallelujah. Am I saved? It is according to the word of God. You are not saved by the accumulation of the good deed that you did. No. Because only one sin erased all your good deed. The book of Ezekiel speaks out of it. So salvation. There is no name under heaven by which man can be saved. Safe. The name of Jesus Christ. Save the name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name. It is not a dispute or discussion or theological or dogma. No, no, no. It is the word of truth. And as I already said earlier, the word of God suffers no contradiction and no error. Why? When God has spoken things all the way back thousands of years, when nobody was on Google and internet or intelligence or whatever, the word of God came true. So if that word came true, then you know the same word of God who said that there is no salvation except the name of Jesus Christ. Then there is no salvation except the name of Jesus Christ. There is no salvation outside of the things that the Lord has done on the cross. Then there is no salvation. Paul said that if the death and the resurrection we preach unto you, if it did not happen, then your faith it is in vain. You believe in vain. So without that sacrifice, there is, none, there is no atonement of sin. So the people come unto the Lord and say, Lord, what shall we do to be saved? Acts chapter 2, verse 37. What shall we do? What shall we do? This is the question you have to ask yourself. Lord, what do I need to do? And I always say that when it comes to salvation, it's not a, a you know, it's not a, 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 a topic of a, of a debate. No, it is a matter of your soul. Because you will be debating here upon earth and then you die and you go to hell for no reason. When actually you could have have only one thing was a step into the finished work of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and letting the transforming grace of God taking you out of darkness and bring you and translate you into the marvelous light of God. Hallelujah. Let's take in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Again, as I shall say, when it comes to salvation, it's important to know if you are saved. How do you know if you are saved? By the word of God. You are saved, convinced you are saved by the word of God through faith in uh, Jesus Christ. The book of uh, Romans chapter 8 from verse 1. Verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Now there is also a condition. The condition is that it says, Who walk not after the flesh? Amen. But after the Spirit. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. That's not the only verse. It's not the only line. It does not stop there. It goes further. And says, you will not be condemned if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If, and only if, you stop practicing the deeds of the flesh. Hallelujah. So salvation is not now the second step. It's not earning. You cannot earn salvation. Hallelujah. You cannot earn it. But as you walk out your own salvation with fear and trembling, what you do, you confirm the work of Christ in your life. The finished work of Christ. And then when the Bible says the finished work of Christ, it means uh, 
that uh, you cannot be saved and receive, saved and receive, saved and receive, saved and receive, saved and receive. You are saved. And you keep that salvation by the Lord Jesus Christ through the renewal of your mind. So that you do not fall and practice sin. At that moment, any condemnation will not be your share because you have now let your life in Christ working under the Spirit. That's why the Bible said there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and who walk not after sin, after the flesh. Sometimes somebody asks me the question and she asks me and she said, but what shall people do, those who struggling with struggle with sin? I say, well, you got to believe the word of God. Why? Because either you believe the word of God or you don't. Because the word of God said that he came to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. And the Bible says he came to destroy the works of the devil. That therefore you can resist the devil and he, the devil, shall flee from you. So if you don't want fleeing from the devil, then the problem is not the word of God. The problem is you. You have not believed it. You have not dwelled by it. And I explained to the person, I said, listen, in a time past when I didn't know anything concerning the word of God and I thought that everything people were preaching was what I, I should go by, I found myself claiming I was Christian and practicing sin. I was on my way to hell. And you see, you will not go to hell because somebody hurt you and then you fell away. No, you go to hell for your own actions. Somebody can rape you, amen? But uh, if you become a prostitute and you remain inside, that, that's your own sin that will bring you there. And the rapist can go to heaven if he confess and repent. So people will be amazed. They go in and then they are the door, they try to get in heaven and the rapist is over there in heaven. The, oh Lord Jesus. The Lord Jesus can, can save anybody. Even Hitler. Hallelujah. If Hitler did repent, he can save him. If Pope, John Pope, whatever, did not repent, he would go to hell. Hallelujah. The Bible says is no respecter of persons. So it does not matter whether you have been the head of the church for 25 years, for 100 years. does not matter. It does not matter. What matters is, have you kept the name of the Lord or have you said the name of the Lord in vain? Amen. So as you do not walk in the flesh, you become like a, a person who are only led by the Spirit of God things of the spirit of God set his, his mind on the things in heaven you don't even have time to think about sin now if you fall into sin because you have your mind set into the things of heaven the Holy Ghost convicts you and says my son my daughter you sin repent hallelujah so you clean yourself like uh, you wash yourself from the stain to remain in the purity and the holiness. That's the reason why the Bible said that with the holiness, no one shall see the Lord. Why? Because you need to remain in the purity of Christ. You cannot go out, sin a little bit, come back. Go out, sin a little bit, come back. You look one. Amen. You don't plan to sin. A practitioner of sin, practitioner of sin, he has sin in his, in his mind, sin in his heart, sin is everywhere. So if you struggle with sin, it's because there is one God that is over you, the devil. Hallelujah. If you accept the truth of God, you will not excuse your own sins. You will deal with it correctly according to the word of God. And that's how the truth sets you free. Because if the word of God says that if you do this, you go to hell. And then you want to excuse yourself to say, no, you know, I think, I think, well, that's not the truth. So you are not saved. You are not delivered. But when the word of God that is sharp, cut you there, cut you over there. And you say, I, I be cut, oh Lord Jesus. And then that truth sets you free. Because you know. Now, the word of God will not simply excuse you. You cannot change the word of God to suit your desire. But you have to be changed by the word of God. Hallelujah. So you can be in the desire of the Lord. The word of God is sharpened. And we must abide by it. We must dwell by it. 
The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross not so that uh, you make a shame out of it. Not so that uh, you make a mockery out of it. But so that you live your life worthy of the calling you received. Through the Spirit of God. Practicing and developing the fruit. The Bible says that we shall know them by their fruits. Hallelujah. We shall know them by their fruits. You may love your wife, your husband, your children. If they do not do according to the word of God and Jesus Christ, they will not go in heaven with you. You know, it's not a base. You, you, that, that's why animals cannot be saved because they cannot get saved. Hallelujah. They, 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 they can't believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. <laughs> salvation is not, you, you don't pray salvation for somebody else. The person has to repent himself. Amen. The person has to repent himself. It is an activity, an action, a decision of the person. Hallelujah. When you will be in heaven, you won't even have time to think about your puppy because the Lord Jesus is there. Hallelujah. You will have enough time to worship him, like enough joy to worship him. That you won't even think about your puppy. It's only on earth that you think about your car, your 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 your, your house, your, your 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 whatever. But out there, you don't have time because your mind is no longer from your flesh. Is no longer from this. The Bible says that when we be meeting the Lord in the air, we will be transformed into the what eternal glory, that glorious uh, body. But until then, the body we have came from where? From the mud. So with all the microbe and virus you have in the mud, that's how it goes through your mind. <laughs> Amen. So that's why you have to take the Holy Ghost so that uh, you can be sustained in the Spirit, thinking of the Spirit, of the things of the Lord, of heaven, so that you are walking to heaven. Amen. But once you're saved, not only you're walking to heaven, should I say you're returning or should I say, let, let, let me put it this way. The Bible said that our citizenship is from above. Amen? So as you are on earth, you're only acting like a citizen of heaven. So if you're acting as a citizen of heaven, there are certain things you will not do. There are certain things you will not do because you know your citizenship is not based on the country in which you live, but based on the heavenly. So as a citizen of the heavenly, you can only act as a citizen of the heavenly. If you know you are a child of God, amen, you can only act as a child of God. Hallelujah. Because your way of acting, your way of talking, your way of working, your way of whatever can only be according to the God that you serve and worship. If it happens that you stay away or fall away, the Bible says you still have a tool that we call repentance. But repentance is not an excuse to abound in sin. This we call it mocking God. Galatians chapter 6 from verse 6 and 7, it says, Do not be deceived, for God is not mocked. Whatever a man sow, that he reap it. If you sow in the flesh, you shall also reap corruption. But if you sow in the spirit, you shall reap everlasting life. So you cannot use the reason of the grace of God to make out of it a mockery. Let's go in the book of Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah. I love when uh, the word of God is preached with, uh, with power. Mm -hmm. And then the pierce here and there. Mm -hmm. Amen. Chapter 5. And I will read from verse. From verse 16. 16. Yeah. Chapter 5 verse 16. The Bible says, this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. You cannot walk in the spirit unless you have been saved. 
Are you amen? Verse 17. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. So in the flesh you cannot. Verse 18. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. So because you are therefore led by the spirit, the law of sins or the law that explains all that presents sin is no longer what we judge you. Uh, uh, let me give you this way. The Bible said that uh, the law of God was only made uh, to reveal sin. Amen? So, you shall not kill, you shall not lie, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not fornicate, and so forth. That's the law. This one, you will be judged by it if you are not by the Spirit. It's either you be judged by the law or you be judged by the Spirit. If you are judged by the law, if you break one, all of it will be counted against you. If you judge by the Spirit and then you walk under Him, the law will no longer be used to judge you. But have you received the name of Jesus Christ? Have you believed in the name of Jesus Christ? Have you been born again of spirit and water? Have you been living in truth? So that will be the spirit that will say, this one is mine. Bring him in, salve, um, bring him in, in, uh, in, in the rest of God. Hallelujah. But if you walk by the law, you will fulfill some good, do some bad. Since inside the law, there is no salvation. Because the law of God is only to uh, 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 aggravate, to accentuate the, the, the ugliness of your sin. is not to save you. So that law will always condemn you by saying you are condemned. You are condemned. Because the law of God condemns you for the fact that uh, he explains how sinful you are. That's why you need a savior. So if you walk in the flesh, you fulfill everything the law of God says don't do. So you are condemned. But if you don't walk in the flesh and you walk in the spirit and you come to the Lord Jesus Christ and says, I receive you. I give you my life and you walk in him because you love him. You will also love his law. You no longer by that the law, by the law, but you love his law. How? You do not sin, you do not steal, you do not rob, you do not commit adultery, you do not fornicate. You love the law, but you no longer judge by that law. So when you fall into a sin of that law, Jesus will not reject you. Amen. Because he is your advocate, making sure that you get back up. Just like Peter. He fell, he got back up. And the law said, come in. But if you act according to the law in the flesh and your heart has not been circumcised like a Judah, you fall and you go back to the law and you die in your flesh. Are you following? So the law of God, the Bible says that he was given to, to, to demonstrate how sinful we are. For all have sinned. And fell short of the glory of God. That's why we need the Savior. Now, when you receive the Savior, it's not the only step that you do. You accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your life, not, on, on, not only as Savior. You accept him also as Lord. Amen? And he says, why do you call me Lord, 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 if you do not do what I Say. So when you accept him as Lord and Savior, Savior, he so saves your souls from the works of Satan. He delivers you from the Egypt of your life. And as Lord, because now he shows you the pathway to maintain salvation and to arrive at destination. So he will tell you, do this, do this, do this, do this, not as a matter of a law, but as a matter of his love. And that's why he says, if you love me, you keep my commandment. So now you do the commandment of the Lord, not as a matter of the law, but as a matter of love. 
Alléluia. Verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are this. Adultery, fornic adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Verse 20 says, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seditions, heresy, envying, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, you told them twice, that they which do such things, which practice such things, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And he was speaking to the church, not to the pagan. Because there were some people in the church who were baptized, but they were doing stuff like that. Amen. So he told them, don't get it wrong. I told you in the time past, and I told you before, twice, that what you do will cause you to have your name brought up from the book of life. For those who practice this shall not. Now, one of the things that they say is drunkness. People who drink, 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 drink. So he's a preacher, but he's a drunker. Hallelujah. He's a preacher and he's a drunker. The Bible says that you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why the preacher who came in the book of Matthew, they did not inherit, they did not inherit the kingdom of God. But the law says what? Because you practice iniquity. Amen. And the practice of iniquity is what is also named here. For those who do such things, I have told you, and I'm telling you, will not inherit the kingdom of God. Some people say, oh, well, the Lord is not come yet. But you see, how do you know that as you go to sleep with somebody, why are you sleep with the person you die there? How do you know? Because when you die in that sin, what do you do? You were in sin and you die in. The Lord did not come, but you went. <laughs> Hallelujah. So that thing that I will do that and after I will repent or after I will turn my life, that's a lie. That's what we call the gale of Satan have grabbed and gripped your heart. Because you're not turning away from what kills you. The Bible says, the wage of sins is death. Amen. So, even if the Lord did not come, and you don't know when he comes, but you can go at any time, at any place, at any moment. You walk, boom, you go. You sleep, you go. You drive, you go. You ride in the plane, you go. You eat, you go. You can go at any time. You standing, doing a preaching, you go. You go at any time. So if he did not come to judge everybody, you can go at any time. You run, you go. You play, you go. It's not like you're playing soccer or you're playing football and because you're so active, death we say, let's wait a little bit. No. You're running and boom. <laughs> you can. <laughs> Hallelujah. You go at any time. So better for you to be found when death comes to be found in the name of the Lord. Because you don't know. That's why the Bible says, walk in the Spirit. Because when you walk in the Spirit, the Spirit reminds you, daughter, over there, you sin. Son, over here, is not good. Repent. The Spirit reminds you. And convicts you of sin. And of righteousness. You have to keep the righteousness of Christ in you. And of judgment. 
Because when the judgment comes, you will not look at your eyes. What did you do? <laughs> Amen. Am I saved? By the word of God. It is a knowing according to the principle and the standard of the word of God. How you embrace the truth. How you keep the truth. Again, there is a fine line between legalistic and walking by the word of God. Legalistic is, I must do this or I will not be saved. But you do nothing to be saved. You only believe in the Lord Jesus, accepting him. Amen? Now, once you believe and you receive him, you love what he does. So you do not keep the commandments of the Lord by, I must do it, I must do it. If you do it without love, you are hypocrite. Because you don't do the things of the Lord simply because you have to do it. You want to pray? Oh, I have to pray. No, 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 no. You do it because you love him. You want to offer? No. You do it because you love him. You want to go to church? Oh, today you can church. No. You do it because you love him. So you don't do anything because of the legalism. Meaning the practice, the practice, uh, the, 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 the practice of it. You do it because you love him. That's why I speak always all the time. If you, all you do, you do it as unto the Lord, you will not be uh, tired. You will not be uh, frustrated because you know you do it to somebody. But when, when what you do, you don't do it unto the Lord, you're frustrated. Yeah, you are frustrated. Yeah, you are simply frustrated because it's not unto the Lord you're doing it. You're doing it unto your own flesh or for the pleas of men. So at this point, you frustrated yourself. But whenever you start doing the things that you do for the Lord God, there's no frustration inside. Why? Because you do to the one who loves your soul, who loved you first. So there is no more kind of like approving yourself before him is rendering the worship that is due to him. So you do it, should I say, supernaturally, naturally. Because the Bible says he's the one doing it through you. So as you open more, he does it through you, and then he goes back to him, and you are free. But when you do it yourself, you complain on all the works of God and everything that you have in your life, because you do not do it unto the Lord. So it is good. It is important. I want to read verse 22. Verse 22 says of Galatians chapter 5. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Verse 24, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Hallelujah. He says, 24, They that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. Amen? So you cannot be of Christ and in the same times, the affection of the flesh and the lust of it are in your life predominant. It both gone, don't go to, the Bible says that you hate one, you love the other. You serve one, and then you don't hate the other. So you cannot be serving both master, the master of your flesh and the master of the spirit. Hallelujah. You got to serve only one. You got to serve only one. When you are in flesh, and then you do the things of the flesh, when the Lord comes, he redeems you from the power of sin. So when you accept, you are redeemed. You are not redeemed so that you can sleep in that. You are redeemed so you are removed from it. So you cannot be in the last, in the affections of the flesh. 
But once you are removed, to keep it, you must maintain yourself through the world, the word of God, through the will, through the love of God, through the love of God, through the fruit of the Spirit, the walking in the Spirit. And the walking in the Spirit, the Lord says in some other fruit, that's not the only fruit, but nine fruit that were given here, amen, that were given here so that you can have it as a guideline, as a, uh, 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 as a light for your soul. So as you start practicing, developing like a garden. But God, you, know, you know, in garden you develop fruit, amen? You develop fruit. So as you develop your life as a garden, that's why the Lord planted Adam and Eve in a garden, amen? He wanted them to develop fruit, good fruit, hallelujah. And the Lord always spoke about fruit. He says, without me you cannot do anything. But if you are in me, you bear fruit. So fruit, 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 fruit. He says that we recognize them by the fruit. Fruit, 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 fruit. So a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Fruit, 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 fruit. So the Lord has been talking about fruit, 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 which is also a prerequisite, uh, a, a, a requirement, sorry, for heaven. Fruit. Fruit. The reason why even even goes further in the book of John chapter 15, it says those who do not produce fruit, he cut them and he, he throw them in the fire. <laughs> Amen. So you just connect it to God and you do nothing, no fruit, no nothing, fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. So fruit, 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 fruit. And as I said, from the scriptures, we are no excused. We have no excuse. Either we go by that or we don't. But if we don't, we have to head ourselves towards hell fire. But if we do, we have to head ourselves through the love of God to be redeemed. Hallelujah. What shall we save? What shall we do to be saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus, repenting. From your sins. He's not being sorry about your sins. You know, a thief, when they catch him, he's sorry. But let him go. <laughs> Just let him go. He will go still more. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when you repent, According to the word of God, you are not sorry. No. You are so regretful that this you abandon. Abandoning the old ways, abandoning what has hurt the heart of Christ. What has hurt your relationship with Christ. So repentance becomes the key to not only enter salvation but to maintain salvation hallelujah let's pray father you say that all have seen and now shall come short from the fell short from the glory of god but to those who received you you also gave them power to become child of God. And by that same power, you Lord God, teach to help so that we may do your perfect will. That we be not only a virgin Christian, but a virgin Christian who knows how to keep the oil and the light. Lord, I pray that any of your children who are struggling that we come to the knowledge of truth and be delivered. I pray for all of those who do no longer believe in what you have done. I pray you meet them and Lord God, present them, Father God, your name. I'm asking you, Lord God, for those who stay in you. I pray, Lord God, that they be more and more comforted. Lord God, I pray for those who call upon your name. That there be more and more encouraged. I'm asking you, Lord God, that you will direct us towards your ways. 
that the narrow gate, the narrow gate, shall not only be found, but that we go through it by your word, your blood, and your name. I want to invite you wherever you are. Maybe you are saved, but you are not sure. Or maybe you expect it. Or maybe you don't know. Or maybe you're confused. Or maybe you just need to reassure again. As you hearing me, I want to invite you to pray with me. And remember, prayer is not what makes saves, saves you. What saves you is the sincerity as you utter the words and leave that word in the belief and the sincerity of your heart. So I want to invite you to say this. My Lord and my God, I repent from all my sins. I repent from adultery. I repent from fornication. I repent from lie. I repent from jealousy. I repent from anger. I repent, Father God, from thief, uh, from robbery. I repent from, uh, from murder. I repent, Lord God, from all the things. I repent, Lord God, from unbelief. I repent, Lord God, from trusting men. I repent, Lord God, from looking for glory for myself. I repent from envy. I repent from strife. I repent from rivalry. I repent from the works of the flesh. And Lord Jesus, I'm asking you, take over my spirit, soul, and body. I surrender every part of me unto you. I believe that you are who you say you are, meaning Savior and Lord of my life. My Lord, teach me your ways that I be may found i may be found in your ways always all time and everywhere i pray that my mind be true in you my spirit remain true in you open my eyes to the knowledge of your truth so i may love your truth help me to do your perfect will all time and every time. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.